The mystery of the Flora Hastings scandal, a controversy that swelled Queen Victoria's reign. A royal scandal involving Queen Victoria's lady-in-waiting, of whom she never trusted, and the controversy that led to the Queen's reputation plummeting for making assumptions that were devastatingly not true. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Queen Victoria was destined for the throne from birth when her uncle William IV became king in 1830. She was the only legitimate heir. Victoria was the granddaughter of King George III and Queen Charlotte, who had few legitimate grandchildren, despite having 15 children together. The unhappy marriage of their first-born child, the future George IV, had produced one daughter, Princess Charlotte of Wales, who tragically died during childbirth in 1817. The future of the throne was in doubt, but as George was still legally wed to Caroline of Brunswick, the responsibility fell to his brothers to marry and produce heirs. Edward the Duke of Kent, one of his siblings, welcomed their only daughter, Alexandrina Victoria, on the 24th of May 1819, before he died of pneumonia just months later. Victoria's mother devised the Kensington system alongside her attendant, John Conroy. This was a list of strict rules that Victoria was forced to adhere to and this made her childhood thoroughly miserable as she was left wholly dependent on her mother and Conroy. Their plan and hope was that the girl would become queen at a young age so that they could take control themselves through regency. Some of the strict rules prohibited her from being out of sight of her mother, her governess or the Duchess of Northumberland. The rules were far too harsh for a young girl and she was not allowed to play with other children unless it had been pre-approved and she was given no privacy even at night and she was not allowed to sleep in a room without her mother, or even walk up and down the stairs without help. The pair tried to force Conroy upon Victoria as her personal secretary and treasurer, but when Victoria ascended to the throne, a little over a month past her 18th birthday, she outright refused his assistance at all, and due to her becoming of age, she did not require a regency, much to the dismay of her mother and Conroy. After being controlled profusely throughout her childhood, Victoria's first act as queen was to banish Conroy from her life completely. She then also banished her mother to a different apartment and she was finally rid of their disturbed control. Understandably, she was extremely distrusting of those that served at Kensington Palace and one of those people was the lady-in-waiting of her mother, Lady Flora Hastings. Lady Flora Elizabeth Rowden Hastings was born in Edinburgh in 1806. She was the first-born daughter of Sir Francis Rawdon, the one-time Governor General of India, and Lady Flora Muir Campbell, the sixth Countess of Loudon. Lady Flora joined the Kensington household as the lady-in-waiting for Victoria's mother the Duchess of Kent. As she was on her mother's payroll, she was supportive of the strict Kensington system that had been forced upon young Victoria. It was this that led to Queen Victoria mistrusting the woman, who had stayed silent against the Queen, being isolated in her home. Queen Victoria had a deep distrust for Lady Flora Hastings. She was a constant reminder of the childhood that she had suffered and it became almost unbearable to be in her presence. As a result, Victoria tried to keep everyone as far away from her as possible, in distant parts of Buckingham Palace, in a bid to keep everyone at arm's length. In 1839, Lady Flora Hastings requested to see Queen Victoria's physician, 
She had been complaining of stomach pains and swelling in her abdomen, but she refused to be examined physically with a thorough examination. Due to this, the doctor assumed that she was pregnant and that her unwillingness to be examined was due to shame. Flora had been on a trip to Scotland to visit her family and when she returned she was with Sir John Conroy alone in the carriage in January of 1839. This sighting of the pair together started tongues wagging that the swelling and pain in her stomach was because the pair were expecting a child out of wedlock. Despite this, the Queen's physician, Sir James Clark, prescribed her rhubarb and camphor, which did offer some relief. The rumours did not stop, however. The constant gossip surrounding the Victorian court was rife that she was with child. It was the closest friends and confidants of Queen Victoria that fueled the rumours further, before Lady Flora responded to the rumours by writing a letter for the newspapers, accusing a certain foreign lady, Baroness Lazen, of spreading them. The young queen wrote about it in her journal, and she commented that not even her physician, Sir James, could deny that the situation was highly suspicious. Victoria became certainly convinced that Lady Flora was pregnant and that the most disliked Sir John Conroy must be the father. Perhaps being broken down by the continuation of rumours, Lady Flora finally consented to a medical examination. The doctor was able to determine that she was not pregnant at all. She was instead suffering from an advanced form of liver cancer which had grown a large tumour that was causing the distended stomach of a pregnant woman. The rumours stopped and instead the public and the court were disapproving of such gossip against an innocent woman who was actually severely ill. Queen Victoria's reputation was dented as a result of her smear campaign against Lady Flora. Lady Flora's brother began to protest against the treatment of his sister when she was dying a slow, painful death. She was having to deal with the shame and misjudgment that had been spread by the friends of Queen Victoria, almost in revenge for her silence during her childhood. The popularity of the Queen suffered greatly after this and Conroy tried to use it as a ploy to try and convince the public that the Queen clearly needed help and guidance with her throne to prevent these shameful antics from happening again. However, the smear campaign by Conroy and Lady Flora's brother failed and the Queen gained back the respect of her people in 1840 following her marriage to Prince Albert and the birth of her first child, Princess Victoria. Flora passed away at the young age of just 33 on the 5th of July 1839. She died in London but was buried at the family home, Ludon Castle in Scotland. Sir John Conroy and Lord Hastings, Lady Flora's brother, didn't let the scandal die with her. They launched a campaign to bring the Queen and her physician to justice in the press. But the campaign wasn't successful. Although the campaign wasn't successful, the scandal haunted Victoria for the rest of her days. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.